How many is happy to be in the Lord's house? Amen. Amen. And we could be in the finest funeral home in America. But God's allowed us to be here. Amen. Now, I'm going to go ahead and warn you about this sermon tonight. Uh, we're going to probably laugh a little bit and get under conviction a little bit. and It's going to start off kind of slow, but you just hang with me. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, when you get there, let's stand in honor of God's Word. I, I don't know about y'all, and I, and I am not one of these preachers that's going to put on a show and tell you that I got it all figured out. Y'all know me better that by now. Sometimes when I read behind the Apostle Paul, reading behind the Apostle Paul is almost like reading behind, and Brother Donald's going to probably know what I'm talking about, almost like reading behind Matthew Henry. Half time, you ain't got a clue what he's talking about. Somebody say amen. amen. Don't sit there and get all holy on me. Amen. I'm just being honest with you. And when I read this, some, some of this, Alan, I, I'm going to read tonight. I'm, I understand it, but when you, when you read it and you put stuff in context, and it's almost like Paul will throw in a verse of Scripture just way out of, where'd that come from? But just listen to how the Word of God reads. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. If you're there, say amen. amen. For we know... That if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands eternal in the heaven. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. I know all y'all understand both of them verses very good. Amen? <laughs> if so, be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. That's plain as the nose on your face, ain't it? Now he that has wrought us for the self same thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that, Whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. Now, what he's talking about is our bodies. He's talking about the tabernacle. He's talking about the body that we live in. And, how, and he's basically, and I want to preach on this, he's, uh, he's basically preaching about troubles and trials that we have to face while in this body, this earthly tabernacle. That's what he's talking about. Let's pray. God, we love you. We come to you in Jesus' name. And Lord, I ask your hand to be upon us tonight, God. I pray, God, you would encourage us through your word, God. I pray, God, you would help us through your word, God. Lord, I thank you for the songs, God, and the songs were beautiful, Lord, and God, they encouraged us, God, but Lord, just help us to take it a step further tonight, God, through your word right now. Lord, we love you, and we thank you for all you do, God, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11 tells us that we are pilgrims and strangers in this world. Paul is kind of alluding to that a little bit. When we got saved, we became citizens of a place called heaven, amen? Amen. Since this is true, and it's almost, and, I, and I, I've heard, uh, I, I've been around uh, Miss Mamie Snipes, and I've been around Jawan's grandmama, and I've been around the older folks that said they have just as, have more on the other side than they have on this side. So it's almost like the pull from the other side sometimes gets stronger than the pull to stay here. I don't know, is it just me, or does it seem like this world ain't nowhere near as comfortable to be in as it used to be we just look around and see everything that's going on now and uh, there's, a, there's a desire for all of us who are saved to go on and be with Jesus amen to be, be done with all the troubles and done with all the trials that same desire was in the heart of Paul Paul uh, said in Philippians chapter 1 verse 23 for I am in a strait between to having a desire to depart and to be with Christ which is far better Paul's basically saying and I want to preach a little while on the thought of I feel like traveling on I feel like traveling on this world's not my home amen Brother Johnny uh, sings about the song, sings that song about uh, I, I've never been to heaven, but oh, I want to go. 
Brother, Robert's, uh, Brother Robert opened up when we talked about walking on streets of gold and, 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 and seeing all the things. You know, listen, when, when we get to heaven, there ain't going to be no CNN giving us bad news and there ain't going to be no newscasters giving us bad news because there ain't going to be no bad news. Amen. There ain't going to be no lies told. There ain't going to be no politicians up there lying about what's going on over here and over there. Hey, God's going to rule and reign and everything's going to be great. So let's start off, when we see what's going on in the world today, we do feel like traveling on, but Paul talks about some words about hardship. Paul don't pull no punches when he's, when he's writing this out. Notice how he, how he says these things. He talks about how, how the, this is going to be a temporary time. Paul uses two words to describe this temporary time. The first word is tabernacle. It's, it's basically as a tent or a temporary dwelling place. It is used as a, a metaphor for our human bodies. This is a tabernacle that we live in. We, we understand that one day this tabernacle is going to be dissolved, and we're going to move to another one. Yeah. Amen? Amen. But Paul is using this, and then Paul uses another word. He says the word dissolved. That means to demolish. That means to destroy or loosen. Uh, it was used uh, 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 in reference to travelers searching for the end of their journey. That's what we are. In other words, this is the temporary time. Understand that these mortal bodies are going to fall away. These bodies that keep us attached to this world, one day will fall away and we'll leave here. And, and, and understand, so if you believe that, if you believe what the Bible tells us, then you got to understand this world is not our home. I've told you this before from this pulpit. I won't never forget it. Uh, I won't never forget when, when Juwan's grandmama, when Miss Flory's mother was passing away, Juwan and Heather had gone on a trip to Atlanta, and uh, there was a nurse at White Savannah. She came over to the house that night, and they, she stayed there the whole time until uh, Miss Grace had passed away. Her son, had, Brother Robert, had went out and fell asleep in the car. And he, he come out, she come out and said, Son, I just want to let you know that Miss Grace passed away. He said, I know. He said, how'd you know? He said, because just a little while ago, I saw a light come down and another light go back out. This, work, this body, is, let me understand something. Me and Dallas were talking about this yesterday. We wake up in the morning, if things don't hurt, there's something wrong. Amen. Some of y'all better say, sorry, you better say amen right there. These bodies, I mean, listen, we're born to die. Right. Understand that you're not going to live forever, and thank God. I went by and saw uh, Mickey and Pansy. Had prayer with him because he's having that surgery tomorrow. And that, that little dog they've got, she added it up. In, in human years, that little dog's 115 years old. He don't get around like he used to, like she used to. Can't see, can't hear like she used to. Folks, every one of us are heading that way. Understand something. This is just temporary. Uh -uh. This brings two thoughts to mind, a blessing and a burden. The blessing is this. The, this life and problems will not last forever. Amen. Amen. Oh, I, I told somebody, said, Hi. they asked me how I was doing, Alan. I said, I'm doing pretty good today, but i got to get my taxes done tomorrow, so it's going to be a worse day tomorrow. That's trouble and trial. We all, we're going to all face it. It's not going to last forever. <laughs> like one old man said, my favorite verse in the Bible is it didn't come to stay, it came to pass. Amen. That's the blessing. The burden is because this life, or, this life is temporary, and we're all touched by the hand of death. We all watch loved ones leave this world, and we've got to prepare for us to leave this world. That's the, that's the truth about a temporary life. Uh, 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 Sister Linda was telling us about uh, uh, Junior Griffin. The cancer has come back and understand something. Uh, uh, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know who might not be here this time next week. But as life goes on, just the scheme of things and the way things are, some of us ain't going to make it. This time last year, there were people that sitting in this church tonight that's not here tonight. That's the burden. Not only is it a temporary time, sometimes it's a tragic time. Look how Paul describes 
this life and its tragedies. He said, uses the word groan in verse 2. That word means to sigh heavily within. He uses the word burden in verse 4. That means to be pressed down on the inside uh, mortality. In verse 4, the word refers to that which is mortal or liable to death. Paul is using these words to remind us that this life is filled with tragedies and trials and traumas. The Bible tells us in Job chapter one, verse, chapter 14, verse 1, man is born of woman, is of a few days and full of trouble. The Bible says in John chapter 16, verse 33, These things have I spoken unto you, that ye might have peace in the world. Ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus didn't say you might have tribulations. He said you shall have tribulations. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 22, For what hath man in all his labor of the, and of the vexation of his heart, wherein he hath labored under the sun? For all his days are sorrow and his travail grief, yea, his heart take, taketh not rest by the night. This is also vanity. Thank God all of this is temporary. But it's a time of testing. Y'all understand it's a time of testing. That's why... Throw it in there. We walk not by faith, but we walk by sight. I remember reading a story one time uh, about a preacher that had lost his family in a tragic fire. And he was walking downtown and he come by Dallas, he come by this great construction site. And he was broken hearted and he was just, uh, and just to be honest, he was questioning God. Anybody ever done that? I know some of y'all all holy and you ain't never questioned God, but, but I'm just saying sometimes you do. He got to questioning God as he, as he walked by. He noticed this one guy over there, Brother Donald, and he had a chisel and he had this piece of granite and he was chiseling away on this piece of granite. And he looked at him and he said, what in the world are you doing? He said, well, he said, if you look way up yonder in the gable of this big cathedral, he said, you see that one little spot up there? That's like a triangle. He said, yeah. He said, I'm carving this out down here so it'll fit when it gets up there. All your troubles and trials, all the stuff you're going through right now, God is trying to carve you out down here so that you'll fit when you get up there, amen. Understand something, this is a test in time. How many of us, how many of us realize that God is testing us? How, let me ask you a question. How many of you passed the test today? You know, it's almost, I, I, I've said this before, God's almost like our teachers that we had in school. When you fail a test, guess what? You're going to take the same test again until you pass it. I know that makes some of y'all upset, but guess what? It is what it is. God ain't going to give you no more than what you can handle. And until you can handle the blessing, God's not going to pour it out on you. He's carving us out down here so we'll fit up there. Amen. And that's, that's, that's hard times. All right, now y'all wake up. I'm getting ready to get you, get you giggling a little bit. But Paul does say there's some hope. Paul, Paul shows us the downside, but he also points out there's a positive side. We have a comfort and hope. Paul has already told us about this life and all his ups and downs. Now he tells us there's some things to look forward to, amen? We got some things to look for. Paul's telling us that as this earthly life draws to a close, understand something. When you take that body and you put that body inside that casket and you take it down there to that graveyard, we were just, we were just at it. Me, me and Sister Dean was just at a graveyard last week. We take that body down there. Hey, that ain't the final resting place. Glory to God. I like right. And Brother Donald said this, and I told my wife, I want this on my tombstone. This is but a shell. The nuts done gone. Amen. I'm telling you right now, you understand something. Well, hey, this ain't it this ain't it revelation chapter 21 verse 4 and god shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away the glories that are our new bodies and our new homes understand that this glory is going to fade away these bodies are going to fade away but there is a glorified body that we're going to get one day glory to god that will not fade it will not age it will not get sick After Paul, like I said, Paul said these bodies are dissolving right now. Heard a story about a little boy. <laughs> He'd been listening to his mama, and one night his mama was putting this hair white stuff all over her face. 
Some of y'all ladies know what I'm talking about, that, that beauty cream. She put it on her face, Adrian. She rubbed it in, and she'd take it off. And she'd rub it in and take it off. And finally, his, his, his curiosity got the best of him. He said, Mama, what in the world are you doing? She said, this is a beauty cream, son. And, and she went to take it off. He said, well, Mama, it ain't working. <laughs> and you know what amazes me? And me, and my, me and my wife talk about this a lot. All these people on TV, they're trying to stay young, and they look like they've been sucked on and pulled on and look like the ears are in the back of their head. I'm tell, let me tell you something, folks. They, I don't care what you do. These bodies are going to die. These bodies are going to die. You can lift it, suck it in, tuck it in. I don't care how. Hey, 90 years old is still 90 years old, and 90-year-old body ain't going to make it. They might be smiling at you in the coffin, but they're still going to be just as dead. These bodies are temporary. <laughs> now listen to this. Someone said, you know, you're getting old when it takes longer to rest than it did to get tired. Amen. Amen, Mike. I'm there, brother. You know you're getting old when all your dreams are reruns. <laughs> you know you're getting old when you sit down in a rocking chair and you can't get it started. <laughs> you know you're getting old when your mind signs a contract that your body can't keep. Amen. You know you're getting old when you don't care where your wife goes as long as you ain't got to go with her. <laughs> Amen, Sarge. You know you're getting old when your knees buckle and your belt don't. <laughs> you know you're getting old when you sink your teeth into a stake and it stays there. And you know you're getting old... When everything hurts and what don't hurt don't work. <laughs> Solomon said in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 20, all go to one place, all are from the dust, and all return to dust. Amen. We ain't staying here. But the thing about it is, I'm, I, I'm glad we can laugh a little bit about it. But understand something, folks. We got a hope. We got a hope. Amen. Uh, Paul uses these words we know in verse 1. We have in verse 1. We are always confident in verse 6. And we are confident. Paul ain't talking about a maybe. Paul's talking about a no-so. Yeah. Glory to God. And I know that I know that I know that I'm going to heaven. Amen. I got a hope. And I ain't basing my hope on some wishing. And I ain't basing my hope on some, on some lucky charm. I'm basing my hope on Jesus Christ. Glory to God. I'm basing my hope on something that I know is real. And Paul Cozy talks about some words about home. It's a perfect place. Paul tells us that our building or our builder is God. Now you look at what God has built down here. You're looking at a sin-cursed world. We, uh, somebody talked about one time how that, oh, we got the beautiful roses and the beautiful flowers and the Grand Canyon and the sky, the blue sky and all the beautiful. There are some beautiful things on this earth, but we're living in a sin-cursed world. Imagine what it looked like when God made it. And imagine what it's going to look like when God comes back down and redoes it. Amen? So if God built it, we can't even imagine what it's going to look like. But in reality, if, we're, if you're truly saved... Like Brother Robert sang that song, I ain't worried about the crystal sea. I ain't worried about the street of gold. I'm not worried about Peter, James, and John. My Lord, just find Jesus. That's where I want to be. Amen. If there's anything more important in heaven than him, then you ain't going to the right place. It's all about Jesus. This world right now, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 22, this world right now tainted by sin and, and, and it's cursed by sin. But one day God's going to wipe away all tears. 
Revelation 21, verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter into anything that defileth, or neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they that are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Not only is it a perfect place, it's a permanent place. You know, I, you know what upsets me? You, cut, you, you, you work like a dog, you build a house, or you buy a house, and then you got to work on that joker. Every year, you got to clean out a gutter, you got to do some painting, you got to wash it, you got to do something. And understand something, the very best, I was talking to someone today, and they were, they were talking about a church, and I'm not going to call the name of the church, but they said, they told me, they said, said the, the, the rafters are falling in, the foundation's crumbling. Y'all realize if we stay here another hundred years, if, if time lasts another hundred years, most every house we live in is going to be gone. But there's a place we're going to. It's a permanent place. <laughs> Y'all realize that Methuselah's been there longer than he was alive? And it ain't changed. Let me read you this one little illustration, then I'm going to come to a close. Years ago, men used to sail around the Mediterranean Sea. It's the Mediterranean Sea is called the Mediterranean Sea because it's, a, it's supposed to be in the middle of the earth. Every now and then, they would go to the Straits of Gibraltar. They would venture out a little ways into that open sea, and then they would come back to the Straits of Gibraltar, back into the Mediterranean. That great rock, Gibraltar, rising up out of the sea, had some caves, and these mariners would go into these caves and rest for a while. They chiseled on the rocks of Gibraltar, the words in Latin, ne pulis ultra, which means there is nothing beyond. They were scared to go out. As far as they knew, they were stepping out of a place that they had no, uh, they had no end. Then one day, a man named Christopher Columbus set sail. He sailed all the way to the west. We know the story about Christopher Columbus. Came to a brand new land, discovered the Americas, and went back and told everybody what he had seen. Well, some of the mariners went back up to the rock of Gibraltar and chiseled off the word N-E, nay. And simply left the words, plus ultra. The inscription, which before had read no more beyond, now simply said, more beyond. I come tonight to tell you there's more beyond this life. Folks, heaven is more real than the pews you sit in. Heaven is more real than what you're looking at right now. Hey, how can you say that, preacher? Because what you're looking at right now will dissolve away. And heaven won't. Amen. I hope you're encouraged tonight. I know the devil fights us. I know every last one of us has got troubles and trials. We've got family situations. We've got sicknesses and uh, got a lot of stuff going on. Let me say, life's life. I told you all before, it shocked me when I got saved that they sent a water bill to my house to nerve of them people. I'm a Christian, bless God. I shouldn't have to pay for electricity. I mean, that, it, but that's life. Amen? That's life, and it ain't, it ain't going to get no better. But we still got hope. And my hope ain't in Donald Trump. And my hope ain't in the Republican Party. Sure ain't in the Democratic Party. And Joe Biden, I ain't going to go there. We done laughed enough tonight. Our hope is in Jesus. Amen. If you would bow your heads.